We saw plane. We Want to talk about plane? Plane. Let's talk about plane. Okay. I did see that you are like you are really stressing about the synopsis, the synopsis game uh, lately. It's the money shot. I mean, if you, you if you do the on YouTube, the uh, you know if you drag the the oh, yeah. thing, you could see the bumps to like the like the most rewound feature or yeah. like portion of the video. Yeah, people drop out immediately after the synopsis. It's it's somebody reading a script and being like, oh man, this this is probably the scene that will get the. Uh, that will get the either the trailer or the award show clip. Yeah. I, so I need to nail this. I need to nail this one. Okay. Plane. When his plane gets struck by lightning, veteran pilot Brody Torrance must maneuver an impossible landing on an unknown island in Southeast Asia. Brody is focused on a safe return for his passengers, but this dangerous island and an unlikely teammate teach him the extreme meaning of of fight or flight. Ho That last line is a fucking bar. Dude, I had to buy additional wow. waste baskets because it just crumpled up thing because I kept putting in like when a convicted murderer blah 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 like all this stuff and I was like dude, you just have to get fight or flight in there. Yeah. I mean, that's that that makes me feel like that the movie should have been named Fight or Flight. Like I the movie was universally panned and mocked for it being named plain like the i remember the tweet going around that was like you are never gonna believe the twist at the end of this trailer and it was just the fact that it was named plain um <laughs> it, it, like not naming it fight or flight seems like a, a real missed opportunity here i do have one complaint about your synopsis though okay calling him brody seems a little bit disrespectful like it should be captain captain torrance, torrance. yeah Okay. I I think that there's so much humanity in Captain Torrance's character that the viewer is left with a familiar, familiarity with him that makes him feel – that makes it almost familial. I, I disagree, but I, I do appreciate that counterpoint. <laughs> I, I like, do appreciate uh, your, your wiggling your way out of that I one. I like d- defending uh, the synopsis with – like movie critic speak. Yes, right. Yeah. Your point is taken. However, the depth that director hold on. Who directed this? The depth that director it's, it's like a French, French Jean name? Francois Richet yeah. injects into the our protagonist. It's it, it is very ironic that like uh I I believe that our approach to movie reviews is is sort of like an everyman's approach, and yeah. you know, being very all we can do, be, being very down to earth and talking about movies not like critics, but really getting into that mode when you're writing the synopsis, which is usually the opposite, which is just a way to a way to appeal to the general public. Uh, on the Patreon, you can request a synopsis for your favorite movie, and. I don't know how we could do this, but we'll print it out, sign it, frame it. Three hundred dollars? Yeah, yeah, that works. That I mean, we should do, we talk about the coffee table book from forever ago, the Fun Facts coffee table book. What if we just did a oh, synopsis t- book? Synopsis book. A synopsis book would be great. Plain is a seventy-five on Rotten Tomatoes. 94 audience score that gives it a juicy brunch score it's a Mm -hmm. juicy it's 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 only 19 the the brunch score of of this movie and uh i'll i'll tell you what stars gerard butler of course i quite rated this movie i've seen other people say this since i thought and texted this to friends but it it's just one of those they don't make them like this anymore sort of like early aughts action movie yeah no i i I agree with with that stance um it does have a lot of nostalgia appeal i i think that it's a it's a pretty bad movie um and it's pretty dumb but i did have a good time like i i was invested the whole time and there were very few points where I was like, 
all right, uh, enough of this. It moves quite quickly, but they don't do a lot of things well. Like, I, I think that a lot of things about this movie are forgettable. So, I didn't know that the plane lands in this movie. Mm-hmm. Going in, yeah, I, I just... crash. I thought that a bunch of stuff happened on the plane. I didn't know that it was about a... They land relatively quickly, and it's more a... Honestly, it's got some Tropic Thunder to it, where they are dealing with some people who want them dead or to hold them hostage, and somebody who's maybe not super well-trained for this moment has to play hero. And I love a good Gerard Butler action movie. You love a good Gerard Butler vehicle? Yes, Although this was not a good Gerard Butler vehicle. It, it was not. Got struck by lightning. That's, it was at one point, but then it was a compromised vehicle. The vehicle's no good. Although, you know what? They were able to get some juice back into it. They were able to get some mm-hmm. power into the old bird. Here's a question um, about semantics. Um, what is the difference between a plane landing and a plane crashing? Because you can have a crash landing. Yeah. Do the people on the plane get to say that they were involved in a plane crash. I think you and I both know which people on that plane will for sure be saying, <laughs> oh, I was in a big plane crash, which like, yeah, you know, you, you were. I'm not, I'm not actually dismissing that. I, yeah, you could say that you were in a plane crash. Yeah, I, I would agree, but I, I think it's an interesting discussion. Do you think that Gerard Butler, his character, no. would, would openly volunteer that he like was in, once involved in a plane crash? He would vehemently deny that he was in a plane crash. He would say, I landed that plane. Well, not some to... of the some of the passengers are quite ungrateful. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yes. That is that was like one of my big takeaways. It was like, yo, what the fuck? Like the guy from the office who's taking a poop when uh, Jim and Pam go to look at the daycare place. I don't remember uh, this. He's he, well, he's like the the real asshole passenger. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, what, what do you not know how to fly the plane? And it's like, dude, the fucking plane broke. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was that was a little bit stunning to me is like how ungrateful like most of the passengers were that this plane went down and the pilot fashioned a miraculous crash landing you're all still alive right that's that has got to be the only thought that going through your mind is like i fucking hope that i live through whatever this is as the plane is going down and as soon as they landed they were like oh i'm not at my destination uh they don't have any sort of communication and they don't know the island location they just know that they've landed somewhere. They got a map. They can kind of guesstimate, but they can't communicate with uh, anybody back home. And the airline knows that it lost this the plane. It lost calm at a certain time and in a certain place. They need, they got to find this plane. So that's where Tony Goldwyn comes in. Goldwyn, Tony Goldwyn. Who else can play the president but you? And I didn't know he was in this movie, but... Me neither, but I was so happy when I, I saw I wanted to him. stand up and cheer. Perfect. As you know, Tony Goldwyn plays a president in something. Oh, he once famously <laughs> said. Incredible. Devotees uh, of the podcast will remember that when uh, Joe Biden was... Uh, for the Joe Biden inauguration, they had this weird streaming thing that was hosted by Tony Goldwyn, and he said, now I may be known for playing a president, but let's give it up for the real president. And I was no, like... The only reason anybody was watching that shit was because of um, the New Radicals. Yeah, the New Radicals the, were going to perform. The New Radicals performing, and this guy was hosting it, and boy, he was fucking milking his screen time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everybody, our big takeaway was, who the fuck is this guy, and why does he think we should know who he is? I will revise, looking back in hindsight, Tony Goldwyn, I respect him. Yeah, we were like, yo, the guy from the Belko experiment is uh, <laughs> kind of going long. and mighty here. <laughs> kind of going long on this. Could you get to, could you get to the <laughs> radicals, please? Uh, but he is tasked with coming in, and basically his job is to uh, tell uh, Paul Ben Victor's character 
you guys don't know what you're doing. What kind of shitty airline is this? And then he's like, Paul Ben Victor is like, oh, right. Uh, let me get on the phone with somebody. Hey, what are we doing? What kind of shitty airline are we? And Tony Goldwyn's like, no, no, no. I was yelling at you. This is your part of the, the problem here. But a uh, big fight ensues on the island. And uh, the alleged murderer, who admits that he's a murderer, right? Or no, no, no. He's his wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, they don't yeah. really get into that, and that's that's my one of my biggest complaints about this movie is that like the characters are so shallow for the most part. Like the characters stink. Even one of like the most important ones, I would say, like he becomes the most important character uh, to like the latter half of the story. Oh yeah, he's the only shot of anybody getting off that island, right? And you you don't know anything about him. Yeah, but I can But I mean, maybe hold on. Maybe perhaps director Jean Francois Richet chose to keep the character of uh, Louis Gaspar uh, a, a bit a, mysterious. A, a mystery because, like, you it because puts you in the in the shoes of the people that are with him. All you're given is a label with him: murderer, convict. Yeah, He's but they, the like, person they, you need to tease, trust, though. They tease you with, like, the relationship between Gerard Butler and him and, like, figuring out where where the misconception comes from or, or like, things like that. And they never really get into it, and that feels, that feels a, a bit disappointing and a bit unfulfilling. And so, like, that's my complaint. And, like, I don't give a shit about any of the passengers because they don't have any sort of humanity to them. What do you give it on Letterboxd? Uh, I gave it a two and a half stars on Letterboxd out of five. You gave it two and a half? I did. I gave it three and a half. Okay. Just a fun time. I know it's not a great movie, and three and a half is probably the maximum you can give a movie that you know isn't great. And that's what I'm giving it because I just had so much fun with it. Man, nonstop action. A real uh, white knuckle ride that's right